In this week's Photoshop design tutorial, I'll teach you how to do a simple portrait poster design in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and you can find me over at retapro.com. On this channel you get to learn everything about Photoshop design in weekly quick tutorials. And in today's episode it's all about a portrait poster design in Photoshop. We're going to work with some fonts, some color and some cool shapes. Let's get right away into the tutorial. Okay, so over in Photoshop, right away you guys can see again in my layers palette here, I already have a folder. Let's open that and I will also show you guys quickly what we'll do. Again, we'll import an image, right away we'll add a bit of a blue tint on top, we'll flatten it a little bit, we'll work with some shapes here in the background, and some more shapes, some text, and that's basically it. And then right at the end of this tutorial, I'll also still show a little bit of an um, adjustment layer here, selective color with the neutral tones, how you can play a little bit more with the color tones. Great, so let's get started right away. I'm going to drag in my image here, drop it into Photoshop, and accept this. You guys can also find this again in the description down below in the Tronics Design Media Package. You can download all for free. All right, currently this is a smart object. I'm gonna hit right click and also say here rasterize. So it's a bit quicker for my computer to render. All right, then next step that I want to do is add a new layer. Let's fill this up. Go to the marking tool here, rectangular. I'm gonna select everything. Hit right click inside of the selection and go to fill. I'm gonna choose a color contents here. And then also a quite of a bluish color under the color picker. Let's say OK. OK again. I'm going to press Command D, get out of the selection. And if you're a Windows person, please press Control when I say Command. Then next step, I'll switch first of all to color blending options. And right away you get to see the right effect. But it's a bit too strong for me. So I'll turn this a bit down just for the beginning. Remember, you can always come back and change the opacity again. Let's actually stick with 50% for now. And then on top of that, I want to add another white layer. So let's just make a duplicate of this with Command J. Windows people, please press Control when I say Command. Okay, Command J. And I'm going to double tap on here and literally just say Color Overlay. And we're going to choose white here under the layer styles. OK and OK. Great. Now the opacity, I'm still going to take this down a bit more. You guys are also welcome to create a new layer and obviously use again the rectangular marking tool and fill it up completely with white. I just took a shortcut today. All right, so that is white now. Okay, for the next step, again, I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard, select everything and press command G and put this together in the group and rename this to background. You guys can obviously rename it to whatever you want. I will keep it to just the background. Great, for the next step, again, I'm going to create a new layer here and first of all, start working just with the pen tool. P for the pen tool. Okay, set an anchor point over here and also here, and maybe somewhere in the middle. I'll just do this very roughly. Press Command T, get also in the transform mode, select an anchor point here and hold Shift. So it's equally expanding, and I'm gonna place this right over here. Hit Enter, and right away we have a triangle. Obviously it's not symmetrical, but you get the point. Then I'm gonna hit right click, say make a selection, zero feathering please, and on the new layer, fill this again with the same foreground color as we had under the blues here. So right click, go to fill, and right away I'll go to color for the contents as well. Hit OK, and OK again. Great. Command D out of the selection, and I'm going to take the opacity to around 60%. Great, like so. OK, and it looks a little bit more bluish than I think my previous version. Have a look. Yes, it's a bit more blue, but obviously you can always change the color again right in the beginning. Then what I'll also do now is go back to the triangle over here, press Command J in order to duplicate this and move this around. Press Command T to transform this and make this just a bit smaller. So I'm trying to get some really uh, weird triangles here. Okay, so I'll place one over here maybe at the top. Command J once again, put one over here and Command J put one again over here somewhere. I'm just going to rotate this again with Command T order to rotate this a little bit. Okay, great, like so. Okay, with the move tool again, moving this a little bit around. And if you want to, you can create now a few more for the bottom or again inside some really weird ones. I don't want to work too much with this and bore you guys too long with this. You get the point of how to create the triangle, replicate it, and then also obviously place it in a weird position. 
I'm going to select all of the layers, press Command G, and rename this first of all to shape maybe. So this is my first shape that, I, that we've used. Again, if I can spell this right, shape one. Doing so many mistakes today. Anyways, shape one. Okay, great. Then also create a new layer. Then we're going to go over to the shape tool, custom shape tool over here. Just hit right click again on the tool, custom shape tool. And right away in the application top menu here, we'll go to the shape. So I've got tons of shapes. Again, have a look down below in the description. It's all in the media package for you guys as well. Great. So I'm going to select this shape over here. This shape is going to be selected. And right away under fill, I'm going to select it transparent and go to stroke and set this to white. And also I want this to be only two pixels. Hold shift on the keyboard and now I'm creating just a huge shape over here. Also now I'm going to press command, shift and H together in order to just hide the paths and the outlines here. Great, so we get to see it right away. Then I'll take the move tool and now literally I'll just move this around a little bit on the canvas. Again, I'm trying to create some really weird shapes now. They will not look the same as the previous version. But again, you guys get the point of what I'm doing. Okay, so this is the first shape. Now I'm going to duplicate this. So Command J again, duplicate this and move this a little bit around. And if you want to also, what I didn't mention earlier is that you can go to shape two and just turn the visibility down a little bit. Say also something like 60%. Great. So let's delete also here our previous one and just make a duplicate of this. Okay, let's just drag it to the bin button and Command J, duplicate this. And again, we can also put this somewhere over here. And now I'm going to press Command J in order to duplicate again. But I'll press Command T2 and transform this a little bit more down. So we have some smaller versions, bigger versions, and a bit of a difference in here. Okay, let's Command J this again. So all the time I'm just duplicating, copy, paste this. Okay, and you can be really creative now with this. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. And now for the next step, I'm actually going to double tap in order to get to the layer styles and just say here, color overlay again and choose again that dark blue color that we had before. Okay, and that will be not the same color. So I'm just going to hit OK quickly, go back to my first shape library here and just turn the latest one back to 100% so we can see it in full. I'm going to go back to the effects over here, layer styles, select color overlay, Select the color picker and pick the same color. OK. And OK. Great. Then we can just go back. Turn this one back to 60%. And we are back with our adjustments. OK. So this one, I'll tweak it a bit bigger. Command T. Make this nice and big. And obviously, this is a bit of a creative approach. You can use many different shapes. You can uh, try to replicate only one that looks pretty much the same. That's totally up to you. Okay, and then I think I'm going to add maybe one more just down here in the right-hand corner. So again, I'm not going to use the one with the blue rim light here. I'm going to use something with the white. Maybe even the one close to the cheek here, this one. So shape to copy to. I'm going to just again press Command J, duplicate this. And maybe move this Command T, make it a bit bigger. And put it somewhere over here. And Command J once again and place this also over here. Great, so these are all in the background. I'm gonna now take the first one and the last one, hold shift on the keyboard as well, press command G, and we go into once again right here shape, but shape two this time. And if you want to, you can now take the opacity overall down if it's too strong. So just go here to the opacity and still take this a bit down more if it's a bit too strong. Also what I'll do right away, what I also done on my previous version is taking this white layer here. That's actually white. Remember, we also filled this up again with our styles, layer styles over here. So what I'll do is take the opacity also down a bit more, just to like 10, 11%, so we get a bit more contrast on the first picture. Great. That's the background. Right away, back to the top. And I'm going to select the text tool. And just make a nice big selection over here. And going to write Bill. Okay, and right away, Photoshop has selected already the right font. It's called Intro, Intro Regular. You guys can also find it again down below in the description. Okay, same color. I'm missing it again. Again, the same issue. 
Damn. Okay, let's just accept it for now. I'm going to go back to the shapes, turn this one up to 100% and just leave it for now. Go back to Bill, select all of Bill and go to the color picker, select the same color. Great, so let's make the selection maybe a little bit bigger so we can actually see it nice and big. Let's go with like 430 for a font size, so 430. Let's also move over to the character box. It is a 20% character, so the tracking is 20%. If you don't have the character box, just go to window and choose character box over here. Great, I'm going to accept this. And also with the move tool, just slightly move this somewhere here into the position. And then later, I think, I will still go back to shape one here and readjust here my shape. That's all right. And this one, I might make a bit bigger with Command-T. Hold Shift again, so it's equally expanding. And just place this in here. The sharpness is still there. That is fine. And the last one here, I'll maybe want to make this getting right on the edge here with the B. This is obviously a bit of a creative approach. You can also change this or do it a bit differently if you want. All right, then let's take it up again. And obviously these two have to be still adjusted. So the first one will be again 60%. But remember I said I'm going to leave it for now. So let's actually leave the bill for now and go over to the top. I'm going to create a new empty layer here. And first of all, I'm going to select again the rectangular marking tool. I'll make a small selection here and zoom in a bit. Okay, marking tool again selected. Hit right click inside of the selection. Fill this up again with the same color here. Okay, there we still have it. And okay, command D. And right away, we have now a new element here. Let's just retype this. Okay, and this element I want to have in the background, so I'll push it down, select the text tool, and just also make a selection over here, and right now, maybe new season. Okay, and you guys can't see it because it's the big and the same color. So let's make it white, and I will also work with Helvetica Neue Light, and turn the size all the way down. Again, remember, you guys can also find everything in the description down below, what type of fonts I've used, etc. Okay, except that. Move that somewhere here into the center. I'm also working with my cursors under the move. Great. Then I take new season and element together. Let's move this to just a bit to the side and I'll maybe place it over here. Great. Over elements, again, a new layer here from the new layer icon. Select the rectangular marking tool. And I'm going to make a very small selection here. Just something like so. Again, hit right click inside of the selection. Say fill. And I'm going to choose white foreground color. OK. Press command D. Get out of the selection. I'll zoom in a bit closer because I also want to erase a bit from this. So select the rectangular marking tool again. Make a selection around this. And just hit delete. But remember to be on this layer 10 here, just the layer that you've created. Command D, out of the selection. I just want to make this a bit thinner. Okay, then for the next step as well, again, a text over here. First of all, just make a random selection and write Megas. So that's what the whole series is called, apparently. This is not a real thing. Then I'll go back to Intro, Regular. Make this nice and big. And also I'll stay with the NAS, uh, settings here from the character box just from 20 tracking. So let's make this like 130 big. Accept it and move this a bit up. Great. And right away you can see Photoshop CC gives me some amazing guideline helps here. Okay, if you don't have that, please work a little bit more with guidelines, which you can find out again just with the move tool here from the ruler. Just drag them out. I guess you know already, already about this. I'll zoom in a bit closer and do one more big selection over here and just write some fine text, something like Monday, screening on Monday at 10 p.m. maybe. Okay, let's select all of that. I'm going to go back to Helvetica Neue Light. Make this small, something like 20. Yep, it's too small, but let's take it up a little bit. Up to 40 would be good. Okay, 40. And tracking, please, zero. Okay, accept that. Move that a little bit down. So somewhere here in the middle. I'm going to duplicate this layer now, again with Command-J. 
and just drag this down a bit. Again, Windows people, please press Control when I say Command. Then I'm going to rename this now to just maybe July 23rd, playing on HBO. Great. Let's make this little dot out of here. And just a space. Okay, select everything and accept it. Move this a bit into the center here. And right away you can select HBO and July 23rd plus Monday 10 p.m. And move this still a little bit more into the center here. So it's just nice and centered. Great. I'll go back to layer 10, select the marking tool, and literally just make a small selection and lead some parts here. Just so it's a little strip there in between. Great. Then I'll take now Megas this Monday, July, new season, and this plus element, and press Command G, put it together in a group and write maybe small text. Okay, again, you guys can remember, you can rename it to whatever you like. Great, so again, the background is shining through quite a lot. Like I said, maybe you go back into the background, go to the white layer again, and just tweak this down if it's standing out too much. You guys can also obviously add a new layer always. Take the brush with B, okay, brush tool over here, or B on the keyboard. And make the brush a little bit bigger. I'm working with a uh, Wacom Intuos 5 Pro tablet, so I'm able to, via my wheel here, make it smaller and bigger. But if you don't have that, just press Control and Alt together, move left and right to change the mouse diameter here, and again, the hardness up and down. So keep the hardness to zero, and maybe make it a bit smaller, something like so. And as with your foreground colors, select the same color as Bill, okay. And you can maybe on this new layer just brush a bit in here. Great. And now what you can do is take this layer, 11 here, and also tweak down the opacity a bit more. Okay, and then obviously move this a bit around. So obviously you will have some more color now in here. But try not to add too much. So this background goes a bit darker down here. You guys can also obviously add a mask. And then just with black foreground colors here again, just hide this a little bit if it's too much on the skin and altering the color too much. Okay, that's, I'll leave up to you to play with this a little bit more and refine this. Then last step, I'll still go to Bill here and just tweak this down a little bit more, something like 80% to just stand out a bit. And that's basically it. Then let's select all of it, press Command G again and write Design 2. And now for the final stage, if you want to, you can go to Adjustments, Selective Color Adjustment Layer, and in the Neutral Tones here, so select the Neutral Tones, you can now refine this a bit more with color if you want a bit more magenta, a bit more cyan, or again, up the cyan yellows. Yeah, we can play this a little bit. And the blacks again to tweak again the contrast a little bit. Yeah, so that's up to you guys. Until you are happy, play a little bit more with this. Okay guys, so that's basically it for the tutorial, but remember you can always fall back into your shape layers and tweak again your shapes or if you want to also to the color adjustment layers and play a bit more with the color tones. And if you are like me and just can't get enough of Photoshop, then click on the subscribe button right now. We send out free Photoshop design tutorials every single week. And don't forget, if you have any questions or comments, post them down below in the comment section. And also we take on tutorial requests, so send us your requests to tutorial at RitaPro.com. So yeah, thanks again for watching guys. I'll see you all in the next tutorial. And if you want to download my shapes plus also the backgrounds, have a look down below in the description is a link to our Tronics Design media package where you can download everything from free. So yeah, you're still here and are interested in some more tutorials? Then wait no longer. Just check here on the right hand side. We bundle some more tutorials just for you. Yep, it's your choice. Just click away.